Hi everyone, so I'm back with another great off-campus opportunity and this one is with Google. So if you don't know by now, Google is hiring for their winter intern program. So this is a great opportunity for all of you college students that are looking for an internship. Because of course, having an internship at Google can pretty much set your life and career. So in this video, we're going to talk about the technical requirements. We're going to be talking about the eligibility and I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to clear the shortlisting as well. So everything that you need is going to be within the video. So make sure that you watch it till the end. The last date to apply is 17th of September, so you have a little bit of time. So make sure that you watch the entire video, prepare the perfect application and only then apply. Do not be in a rush. And if you are someone who's having difficulty in getting shortlisted in off-campus opportunities, or you feel like you're lagging behind, you want to crack the top companies, but you don't have the skills necessary, or if you have any other placement issues or issues with your placement journey, then you can connect one to one with me where I will personally help you in making sure that you have the perfect resume, you have all of the necessary skills and that you are able to crack your dream company. So you can connect one to one with me. The link for that is going to be in the description box. All right. So coming back to this opportunity, like I said, Google is hiring for the winter intern as part of their application engineering internship. Okay. So let's talk about the eligibility first because you guys keep asking about the eligibility. So the eligibility here is a bit lenient. If you look at the official page also, they've clearly mentioned that. The eligibility is as long as you're enrolled in a bachelor's degree. As for the degree, they have mentioned bachelor's in computer science or any other technical related field. This any other related field is where the magic is because that means that it's not necessary that you have, if you're a BTEC candidate only then you can apply. If you're from BCA or BSCCS, as long as it's related to computer science, you can still apply for this. That's pretty much the eligibility and if you still have any other doubt, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll be able to clarify it for you there. But the eligibility here is again, I'm reiterating, it is very lenient, which is why I said that I suggest all of you guys do apply for it, do give it a try. Because comparatively, other companies hiring or eligibilities are very strict. This is here very lenient, so you should apply for it. All right. Now we have the eligibility out of the way. Let's talk about the technical requirements. So, of course, they do have a few technical requirements, although it is not a mandatory thing that you need to have a mastery over it to apply. But those will help you, especially in your shortlisting process, right? Because that's what they have mentioned as their preferred technical requirement. So the first thing is, of course, having a programming language. That is something that you should absolutely have for a tech intern, tech internship, right? And the programming languages that they are preferring are going to be Java or C++. Okay. So having Java or C++, if you have knowledge of it, put them in your resume, put them in your application. It is surely going to help you. And if you don't know either of these languages, I highly suggest learning Java because Java is a highly in-demand language and I do suggest that all of you guys should know it at least, if not, at least the basics of it. So that's for the programming language and what I'll be doing apart from this, I'll be giving you guys a list of keywords that will match their technical requirements. So I'll be giving you a list of keywords in the description box in which you'll be finding all of the keywords that will help you in getting shortlisted because this aligns with their JD, this aligns with their requirement. So the list of keywords you'll be able to see in the description box. You can use them in your application. You can use them in your resume to have a better chance. But of course, if there's something that you don't know out of those list of keywords, then you should not put it, but you can learn and then put. Or if you're learning something, you can put it. But if you don't know anything about it, don't put it in your resume. That is the golden rule. You can learn and then put. Okay. So list of keywords you'll see in the description box. But as a general view, you need to have good projects in your resume. And if you have Java related technologies, well and good, because of course they have mentioned Java. So if you have something like Spring, Spring Boot in your resume, that is also going to make a bit of difference. Apart from that, if you have full stack projects, if you have web dev projects, if you have app dev projects, any sort of high quality projects, if you have in your resume, it is going to help your case a lot. So you need to make sure you have good high quality projects in your resume, right? And I keep on repeating this in all of my videos, but it is true. The most important part of your resume as a fresher is your project section. Okay. So you need to make sure that you have good projects in your resume. Apart from that, if you have coding profiles where you have good ratings, mention that if you have a good lead code, mention it, showcase it, highlight it. If you've taken part in any hackathon, highlight it. If you've done open source, highlight it. Any sort of extra achievement certifications that you've done, showcase it in your resume, highlight it in your resume. And apart from that, you guys already know the basics that you need to have a good ATS score, you need to have a good ATS friendly uh, template, right? So you need to have a good template and a good ATS score. So the template I'll be giving you guys in the description box and ATS score is pretty much something that you can work upon 
So I'll be giving you guys two websites to measure your ATS score. One is resume avoided, one is enhanced CV. You can use both of these to check your ATS score and pretty much improve upon that. So keep in mind all of these things while you're preparing your perfect resume and your perfect application. Of course, once you have the perfect resume and application, you can apply. But again, a reminder, the deadline is going to be 17th of September. Make sure that you apply before that because like I said, this is the golden opportunity. And even if you don't get in this, you don't need to worry because there'll be a lot more opportunities in the future. It is already September and in October, November, December, January, you'll be seeing a lot more hiring, right? And for all batches, you'll be seeing, especially for 2026 batch, you'll be seeing a lot of hiring. So all you need to do is make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you can join my WhatsApp channel as well so that you do not miss out on any hiring alert or any hiring opportunities. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If you have any doubt, feel free to ask me in the comments and the link to apply will be in the description box. Apply ASAP and check the description box out. So yeah, thanks for watching.